Hello everyone, so when should you use a stateless widget versus a stateful widget? The answer isn't very simple, but that's exactly what I'm here for, so let's start. This is basically just a couple of boxes that I will make it so numbers increment to show you the difference between stateless and stateful. But first, we need to get back to basics. State is essentially very simplified data or information used by your app. It's nothing too complicated. When people refer to state, they mean the data or information of your app. Now, when it comes to stateless versus stateful, the difference is also very simple. When we say stateless, we don't mean there's lack of information. We just mean that the information is static. It's not changing. It is what it is from the beginning and it won't change. And stateful is the opposite. It is dynamic information. But here are some examples to make sure you understand it better. First, with stateless widgets. They're essentially much like like an art gallery. You put the paintings up on the walls and that's pretty much it. Nothing changes, people come around and see them, they admire them and they go home. But the art gallery is never changed, it is what it is. Paintings are there, you can look at them and go home. How it begins is also how it ends. When it comes to the stateful widget, it's the other way around. It's much more like a chess game. Here, many pieces are being moved, but only one piece being moved is enough to consider a state change. You don't need many different changes. You only need one change to require changing your stateless widget into a stateful widget. Stateless widgets have zero changes. Now that we've gotten that part out of the way, let's put it to practice. Let's make it so that when we click the boxes, the value inside the boxes, which will be a number, will increment by one. For that to happen, we need variables. And first, let's start using a stateless widget. Now, when using a stateless widget, your variables need to be final. I'm just gonna call this the Xbox, even though I'm actually a PlayStation guy. But the important thing here is that you understand that with a stateless widget, you can't have an empty variable. As you can see, it has a red squiggly line. And if I do another one, it will be the same. So let's assign them with values. Let's give this one a zero and the same thing here. Now let's place the variables where they need to be. Xbox and Y box. If I hit control save, it updates. And now let's make the gesture detector actually do what we want it to do. So on here it will be Xbox plus plus. And as you can see, it's already telling us that something is wrong because you can't change something that was set as final. But let's keep it going. Let's print the value and let's do the same for the Y box. Now let's do what they say and remove the final keyword because it will be the only way to let us get away with it but once you do that here you see another squiggly line saying that this class is marked as immutable but one or more of its instance fields aren't final however this one we can get away with it but i do not ever recommend that you do this well let's do it anyway just for learning purposes if i come over here and i click this you will see that it's one so xbox has actually incremented one i click it again it's two and then it's three but zero on the ui why because we said we wanted it to be static. Now if I click here, same thing. But if I click control save and the hot reload, it still doesn't change it. So let's make this work now, shall we? Let's turn this into a stateful widget. And by the way, I don't know if you know this, you can just type in stateless and it will create a stateless widget. And you can also type in stateful and it will create a stateful widget. I can just do this to copy it and let's remove this. And now this is a stateful widget as soon as I change this right here. Now these variables create absolutely no squiggly lines and we're off the hook. Now, whenever you change a stateful widget or a stateless widget to a stateful or stateless widget, I always advise you to restart the app because hot reload might not be enough. And now that we've done that, if I click this, oh wait, it still doesn't change anything. How strange, right? It's still working. But if I save it, it does. So we already see something different. But what's wrong? Well, we need to use the set state method. And what set state does is whatever variables are found within it, it will mark it as dirty and you will go over your entire widget tree, look at the variables that are marked as dirty and change them. And you will see that by doing this, it will finally be updating the UI like we wanted to. Now, if I hot reload this, in fact, let me restart the whole thing. If I click it now, it finally updates. What we want to happen finally actually happens. As you could see, even the container adapted to the change. And that is because this variable is right here and it's marked as dirty and then Flutter goes over everything that is directly related to the variable and if it needs to redraw it as well, it will. Now, you might be looking at this and thinking, oh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make all my classes stateful widgets because why would I use a stateless widget, right? Well, the reason for that is because when you're making a real app, your goal should always be to use as little resources as possible. 
that's what will make your app perform well. So in other words, your goal is actually to always use a stateless widget whenever possible. Only when you can't use a stateless widget should you use a stateful widget. And this is the basic version of the reply to the question, when should I use stateless versus stateful? Because once you get a little bit more advanced, it can complicate. And that's because of state management. Now, what is state management? As I said before, state is information or data. So if you have an app and for example, your username is displayed at the home screen and then you go on the settings and you change your username, that change that you made in the settings screen needs to be reflected back in the home screen. So the information needs to jump across screens and different parts of your app. For example, your username is boring guy and you want to change it to class EAF, you submit it and it changes to class EAF back in the home screen. The user doesn't have to manually change it. That would be crazy. And you might be thinking, why am I talking about this? Well, that's because it's 100% possible to make something in a page change, even if you have a stateless widget. And I just changed this back to a stateless widget so you could see that you can't use the set state inside a class that extends a stateless widget because the set state only belongs to stateful widgets, period. And the reason I mentioned state management is because once you get a little bit more advanced, you will end up using a package called provider package. And that package has a widget called the consumer widget, for example. And you can imagine that this entire page would be a stateless widget. And then only the containers would have properties that could be changed. Basically, the containers would be wrapped with the consumer widget. And even though you would be using a stateless widget, the consumer widget would make it update. But that is a little bit more advanced. And you would do that exactly because you want to have as many stateless widgets as possible so that your app can operate and run as smoothly as possible. But if you're a beginner, for now, just focus on knowing how to use a set state and knowing the difference between stateless and stateful. And once you have grasped that, go ahead and learn the provider package because you will definitely need it in 99% of the apps you will ever create. And there are other state management tools like Block, for example, but Flutter officially recommends the provider package. So if this helps helped you in any way, don't forget to leave me a like and go ahead and subscribe if you want to keep on learning Flutter. That's it for this video. This is Flutter Mentor and out.